In this video, we're going to take a look at exam revision for algebraic expressions. Now, hopefully, before watching this video, you've watched the previous videos for indices, thirds, and rationalizing the denominator. If you haven't, be sure to check those out. You will find them helpful um, before covering the questions in this video. Now, as we work through these questions, I'm not going to pause as we go. Um, we're just simply going to work through. However, feel free to kind of pause the video, have a go yourself, and then check your solution against mine. So other than that, let's jump straight into these questions. So the first one here says factorize completely x cubed minus 49x. So the first thing I notice here is we can pull an x out as a factor. So I get x times. So we need x cubed, so that must simply be x squared. And then we need minus 49x, so that must simply be minus 49. Now the question says factorize completely. So we just need to double check what we've got here and then see if we can factorize again. And what I notice here is this x squared minus 49 is a difference of two squares. So we can factorize again. So we get x lots of x plus 7 and x minus 7 there. Okay. And there we have it. Again, just take one more look. Can we factorize this again? Well, we can in this case. So there we have it. So that's our fully factorized expression. For this question here, it says find the value of 4 over 25 to the power of 3 over 2. Now, what we're dealing with here is fractional powers. Now, remember, for a fractional power, start with the denominator. So the denominator here tells us what root we're taking of our base. So we're taking the second root or the square root of 4 over 25. And if we take the square root of 4 over 25, that's the same as taking the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. So we take the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. and once we took the square root, or we've dealt with the denominator here, telling us what root we take, then we raise everything to the numerator. So because my numerator is a power of 3, that means we need to cube the result here. Okay, once we took the square root of 4 over the square root of 25, we then cube that. So square root of 4 would give us 2. Square root of 25 would give us 5. So I get 2 fifths, and then we cube this. So... In this case, this is going to be 2 over 5 times 2 over 5 times 2 over 5. So that's just the same as uh, cubing the numerator and then cubing the denominator separately. So 2 cubed would give me 8, and 5 cubed would give me 125 there. And there we have it. So that's our solution, giving us the value of 4 over 25 to the power of 3 over 2. And then this final one here on this page says find the value of 64 over 27 to the power of minus 2 over 3. So very similar to the last one we've just done. The only difference here now is we have a negative fractional power. Now for a negative power like this, we need to get rid of that negative first. So to get rid of the negative, what we do is we take the reciprocal of our base. So the base here is 64 over 27. So the reciprocal would simply be 27 over 64. So we get 27 over 64. And now the power becomes positive. Okay, so the power changes from negative to positive. So that becomes 2 over 3. And at this point here then it essentially boils down to a question of this type. It's just now a fractional power which is positive. So whenever we deal with the denominator first that tells us what root we take. So I need to take the q root of 27 over the q root of 64. So the q root of 27 over the q root of 64 here. And then remember we raise all of this to the power which is the numerator. So in this case, my numerator is 2, so we raise everything to the power of 2. Or we square everything, essentially, here. So the cube root of 27 would give me 3. Cube root of 64 would give me 4. So we get 3 quarters, and then we need to square this. So that's the same as 3 over 4 times 3 over 4, which, again, we just deal with the numerator and the denominator separately here. So 3 squared would give me 9. 4 squared would give me 16. And there we have it. So the, the value there is 9 over 16. For the next two examples then, we're taking a look at third. So the first one here hopefully isn't too bad. We just asked to expand and simplify 5 minus root 7 all squared. So what I'd do here is I'd write this as a product of two brackets. So I get 5 minus root 7 times 5 minus root 7. And now all I need to do here is expand this. Um, I use FOIL, but whatever method you use, as long as you can expand these two brackets, is absolutely fine. So 5 times by 5 would give me 25. 
5 times minus root 7 would give me minus 5 root 7. Minus root 7 times 5, that would give me another minus 5 root 7. And then finally, minus root 7 times minus root 7, just being careful with your signs here, this would give plus 7. Okay, so that would be positive. And all we need to do now is just simplify. So 25 plus 7, that gives 32. And then we've got minus 5 root 7 minus another 5 root 7. So in total, we've got minus 10 root 7. Okay, so 32 minus 10 root 7. For the next one here, it says express three lots of root 12 in the form m root 3, where m is an integer to be found. Now to do a question of this type, what we're looking to do is simplify this third here, okay, this root 12. The three on the outside, don't let that distract you or kind of put you off here. Just deal with the root 12 to start with, okay? So we're going to simplify this root 12. So if we do that over here, so root 12, well, we need to write this as a product of two individual thirds. And a big clue here is if we take a look at the form that we're asked to get or obtain, we need m root 3. So we know one of the individual thirds here of this product will be root 3. So we can write that in. So that's root 3. And all we need to think about then is what do we times root 3 by to get root 12? Well, that would simply be root 4. Okay, so that's root 4. Now we know root 4 is simply 2. So we get 2 root 3 for root 12 here. So root 12 can be written as 2 root 3. And all we're doing then is we're times in that by 3. So if we just write that out here, what I've got is 3 root 12. But we know root 12 can be expressed as 2 root 3. So what I've got then is 3 lots of 2 root 3. Okay. And then all I need to do is simplify this. Well, all we do here is we do 3 times by 2. So 3 times by 2 would give me 6. So we get 6 root 3 there. Okay, we've got it in the correct form, and we can note then that m would simply be 6. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our solution to that question. Taking a look at some more third type questions here. This first one here, so root 80 minus root 20, again, is very similar to the last one we've just done. Be very careful here that you don't say root 60. We can't do that with thirds. Okay, so we need to work with this form here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify root 80 first, then we'll simplify root 20, and then we can do the subtraction. So root 80, again, we need to write this as a product of two individual thirds. And again, we take a look at the form that we're asked for. So this is a root 5. Now notice this is root 5 here. So we know once we split this up as two thirds, one of those thirds must be root 5. So we're going to get root 5 here. And now we need the other third here. So what do I times root 5 by to get root 80? Well, that will simply be root 16. Okay. And root 16 simplifies. That would give us 4. So we get for root 80 that this is 4 root 5. Okay. So that's root 80. We now need root 20. So again, doing the same here for root 20. And again, we know one of those will be root 5. So that's root 5. So what do I times root 5 by to get root 20? Well, that will simply be root 4. And root 4 gives us 2, so we get 2 root 5 there. So we can now perform the subtraction here, just replacing root 80 with 4 root 5, so we get 4 root 5, and then root 20 with 2 root 5, so minus 2 root 5. Well in this case then, the subtraction here, 4 root 5 minus 2 root 5, will give us 2 root 5 there, okay? Now it doesn't ask us to identify the value of a, but clearly a in this case will be 2. Okay, so there we have it. So that's our solution for that one. For this one here, it's a show that question. So it says show that 5 minus root 2 times 5 plus root 2 over root 23 simplifies to give root 23. Now here, for a show that question, sometimes it's not immediately clear what we need to do. So what I'd say here to start with is just simplify the numerator. So I'm going to simplify the numerator, and what I also notice here is we have a third in the denominator. Now remember, for thirds in the denominator, we don't like that. We want to try and rationalize. So let's just deal with the numerator first, and then we'll take a look at rationalizing. So expanding these double brackets here, I'm going to get 5 times by 5, which would give 25. I then got 5 times positive root 2, so I get 5 root 2. We've then got minus root 2 times 5, so that will give me minus 5 root 2. And then finally, we've got minus root 2 
times positive root 2. So again, just be careful with your signs here. This will give minus 2. Now, you didn't need to expand all of the numerator quite like that. If you notice this is the difference of two squares, then you'll notice these cancel. Okay, so we simply could have done 5 times 5, 25, and then minus root 2 times positive root 2 to give us minus 2. Okay, so you didn't need to kind of show this fully, but I have done just for clarity. So the denominator won't change. That is just simply root 23. So if we simplify the numerator here, we get 23 over root 23. Now we need to show that this simplifies to root 23. And like we said before, we've got a third in the denominator. So immediately, to me, it jumps out that we need to rationalize. Okay, and what we'd hope for here, once we rationalize the denominator, we just get root 23. Now because this is just a third on its own in the denominator, we're just simply going to times the numerator and the denominator by root 23. So I'm going to get 23 times root 23 for the numerator. And then for the denominator here, we're going to get root 23 times root 23. Okay. Now, once we simplify this here, in the numerator, that will be 23 lots of root 23. So 23 lots of root 23. And for my denominator then, root 23 times root 23 will simply give me 23 there. So I've got 23 lots of root 23 all over 23. So the 23s here will just cancel. And I just simply get left with root 23. Which if we notice, is exactly what we needed to show here. We just wanted to show that that simplified to give root 23. So there we have it, so that's our solution. And if we take a look at a final few questions here on indices, slightly more complicated than what we saw at the beginning though. So the first one here says express 9 to the power of 2x plus 3 in the form 3 to the y, where y is equal to ax plus b. So to begin with here, what we need to do is make a connection between this base here of 3 and this base here of 9. So if we start with 3, we're just thinking about powers of 3 here. So 3 to the 1, that would simply give me 3. 3 to the power of 2, or 3 squared, that would give me 9. And that's the other base that we're looking for. Okay, we need 9 here. So we know we can write this 9 as 3 squared. So we can write that as 3 squared. And the power here is 2x plus 3. So the power here of 2x plus 3. And what I want to do then is just simply use my rules of indices here. We have a power raised to another power. So we can just simplify by multiplying those two powers together. So what I'm going to get then is 3 to the power of 2 lots of 2x plus 3, which if we simplify here will give me 3 to the 4x plus 6 there. Okay. Notice that in that case, that y is equal to 4x plus 6. Okay. For this example here. And that's all we need to really do. So like I said, it's just making that connection between the two bases. So in that case, how do we get from 3 to 9? Well, we just square it. Okay. So let's take a look at another similar type of question here. So we're asked to express 64 to the power of x minus 2 in the form 4 to the y, where again, y is in this form of ax plus b. So to begin with, let's just go through our powers of 4 here. So we're making the connection between 4 and 64. So 4 to the power of 1, that would give me 4. 4 to the power of 2, or 4 squared, that would give me 16. And 4 to the power of 3, or 4 cubed, that would give me 64. And notice this now, the 64 here is what we need for our base. So in that case, we can write the 64 as 4 cubed. Okay, so we get 4 cubed. Now we know this power here is x to the minus 2. We can write that as x to the minus 2. And all we need to do now is just simplify here. So we've got a power raised to another power. So in that case, this will give us 4 to the power of 3 lots of x minus 2. And if we simplify that by expanding 3 lots of x minus 2, we're going to get 4 to the 3x minus 6. Clearly, you don't have to quite show this case here. I'm just showing literally every step that we can do. Um, but you can go straight from this step here to this one here if you feel confident enough to do that. Okay. So we take a look at this final one then, and it says find the value of x such that 1 fifth to the power of x minus 4 is equal to 25. So essentially, we're putting together everything we've done for these two previous examples in a slightly more complicated manner now. Now, what I'm going to do here 
is make this connection between 1 over 5 and 25. So it looks a little bit more complicated here. Now, I notice 1 over 5 straight away. Well, 1 over 5, we could write that as 5 to the minus 1. So 5 to the minus 1 is 1 over 5. Okay, just using our rules of indices and negative powers. And 25, what could we write that as? Well, that would be 5 squared. 5 squared is 25. So given that we can write 1 over 5 as 5 to the minus 1, then we can write this here as 5 to the minus 1, all to the power of x minus 4, so x minus 4, and then that's going to be equal to 5 squared. And the reason why we're putting this 25 as 5 squared is because in a moment we need to set the powers as being equal. Okay, so expanding this part here then, uh, or multiplying across because we've got a power raised to another power, um, we are in a room slice. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly clear this part here. And just a little bit above, just so we've got enough room just to finish this off. So let's finish this final question off here. So what we're going to do then is times x minus 4 by minus 1. So finish that off up here. I get 5 to the minus 1 of x minus 4. And that's going to be equal to 5 squared. So expanding this here, I'm going to get 5 to the 4 minus x. And that's going to be equal to 5 squared. And this is why I said now we've brought everything down to a base of 5 because it sounds silly, but clearly we've got this equal sign here. The left-hand side must be equal in value to the right-hand side. So in that case, as they've both got a base of 5, that, would, that must just simply mean the powers are equal. So what we're saying here then is 4 minus x is equal to 2. And all I need to do now is simply solve this linear equation for x. So therefore, what I'm going to get then is I'm going to take the x onto the other side, add x to both sides, and subtract this 2 off both sides. So therefore, what we get is x is equal to 2. So the value of x such that 1 over 5 to the x minus 4 is equal to 25 gives us x equals 2 there. And there we have it. So that brings us to the end of this video on exam revision for algebraic expressions. Hopefully you find this helpful. Thanks for watching.